Hi, I'd like to show you um, how to reline a writing box. You just need, I mean for big surfaces I had special planes for this with a sort of like a serrated edge, but for this sort of thing I, I use a broken uh, a hacksaw blade and just be careful again not to go over the edge onto the polish. So just work from the corner diagonally, scratching the surface across the other way so give this hatched prepared surface. And you've got to go up to the edge otherwise it won't stick down there. I use this wallpaper paste. Right. Um, it's well, I'm not getting paid for this. It's lap wall, cold water starch. It's called cold water paste. It's a it's a, a wallpapering paste, and we use it. And we we add a little bit of the uh, wood glue, which uh, sort of thins it out. I'll show you what we're doing. So we're just taking a little bit of water. It's about we don't need an awful lot. It's a very small lining perhaps about a quarter of an inch of uh, water in the bottom of there and uh, you put in the paste say about that much that's, let's say about two dessert spoons full or something like that perhaps mix that in see how it goes we want to get this to go almost into a solid state jelly sort of state I suppose. We'll just put a bit, bit in here. Don't want to put any lumps of glue in there if possible. Just a couple of what's its names of it. And do that it tends to make it a lot so it's already going quite a bit thinner. And that should do that. So that can we can leave for a sec. You see there's they've marked a little line to the measurements. So obviously I've taken the measurements, sent them off to a, a supplier of these linings. A company called Essex Gallery supplies them and uh, by post. Quite reasonable, I think. Okay, so that seems to be okay. The underneath Sometimes they got bits of wood chip and guns, what else on there? So you don't want that causing little lumps and bumps. Brush it off. To do the lining you need one of these which is a standard roller. It's, uh, they use it for uh, printing and that sort of thing. Uh, it's got a rubber covering. Um, you don't um, want to be, you want something that rolls otherwise you, it pushes the uh, the scriver along and uh, you, you continue moving off the line that you want it to be on. If you leave it a while it does, you don't get those sort of like slightly dry lumps. Should all of uh, be okay now. We've put it on reasonably thick. Perhaps a sixteenth of an inch and get it right up to the edge. As I say, with you, as you've waxy veneers, if you do go over a bit or it gets squeezed out onto the veneers, it won't stick to the polish and rip it off when you uh, clean it. Plus, it's water washable, so it will dissolve any waste on the edge. Well, you can clean off either before or after it's dry. Okay, I think that's okay. I'll just realise I've forgotten something. Normally I run round with a, a larger standing knife. I think I'll do it now. But while you can see where the edge of the veneer and uh, the lower line section is, 
you can run a knife along it gives you a kind of a track well, you don't do it wrong for later cutting the uh, trimming off the waste so. The top is soaking up a bit of the liquid in the glue there, so it's getting a little bit dry. So I think that will be okay. Well, it, it wasn't square in the first place, the whole thing, so you can't really blame them. But, uh, rarely do these things entirely line up, you've just got to get it the best compromise that you can. I think that's about it. This corner doesn't want, want to quite line up. All the rest seem to be pretty close to it. That's perfect. Keep flicking it over like that and you, you should be able to remember where the line was. That seems to be okay. Perhaps it could go that way a little bit. That one's dead on that way and could go that way a little bit. And that one's again dead on but could go that way a little bit. But they're not really overlapping down there. A bit of a tug but... What we'll, what we'll do is try and push the stretch the hide a little bit that way. And we're using this not too hard, otherwise you'll create lines where the edges of the roller are. And uh, I pressed in the edges before it dried, just with my fingernail to make sure it gets as close in as possible. But if it doesn't. Um, once the glue is dried we can put a roller over that, a warm roller, and it will uh, melt the glue underneath and stick down what's left. Right, so I'm going to be cutting to that line that I've made with the nail. Now I want to make sure I've got put the line in the right place, so I'm going to start by the sh one of the shorter edges just bringing it in the knife which is as sharp as I can get it we'll try and see where the veneer ends and the inset starts which I think is about there I feel resistance now you don't want to cut at an angle that way because if you do well that shows properly this if you're cutting at an angle that way you're going to show a very light edge of the of the lever so if you want to go straight or even slightly that way if, if, but not the other way so I'm starting off trying to just make sure I start in the right place and uh, just uh, you see it's just those bits have just got stuck on the edge there but uh, they come off with a bit of water bit in there. Um, as you close as you're opening this you want to keep that fold as tight as possible with 
doesn't matter that you're gonna there's gonna be a mark there that you can't help that on a folding top. Let's fold it over, check the back here with your wet cloth because you're gonna have glue that's gone through. It just needs to be wiped away. Now have a look at the because without a tap it's great fun getting those out, but again, you've got long fingernails, you can do it. Um, again, you get that fold, otherwise it can lift away from the surface. Check my uh, The end. Happen that way around that sort of thing because you're going to lie down this way and this one will lie down that way as well. So. And that, that's it through. You don't want a huge amount there, and that end can now be pinned on. I don't have the right colour. Pins and I think I've got only one colour pin, and what I do is I, I tend to uh, use one colour pin and then just uh, use a little dab of paint on it after I've hammered it. I'm cutting these short because it's not a very thick thing. You, what you don't want is these coming through the other side. You just need a couple of these. Tabs in place, job done. You make sure that's folded down that way, you don't want to get it permanent crease in the wrong direction if possible. There we go, closes all right.